Hello again everyone, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Now for centuries it's been an established fact that the reason ships sailing out to sea disappear from the bottom up is due to the curvature of Earth blocking our line of sight. However, flat earthers obviously have to offer a different explanation and the reason that I've seen most commonly given is due to the Rayleigh criterion. Sometimes phrased along the lines of it's perspective or it's a, a limit to our vision. Which it's not. So in this video I'm going to try and break down as simply as possible to show why. Just like how the classes at Brilliant.org break things down as simply as possible to help learning become free and easy. At the time of filming I'm currently up to 140 consecutive days of doing their classes. I'm now into the realms of learning about astrophysics and in particular the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram showing the relationship of stars temperatures to their luminosity. But don't worry if that sounds a bit extreme for you, they have classes for all levels of maths, science and computing that you can work your way through at your own pace. Each class runs through explaining the principles of the subject and then quizzing you on them and providing a broken down explanation for you if you get the question wrong. So if you'd like to learn something new today then grab yourself a 30 day free trial by visiting brilliant.org forward slash Dave McKeegan and the first 200 people to do so will receive 20% off their subscriptions. Now any object that we can view has an angular size which is the angle that we see from one side of an object to the other and this varies depending on two things. Firstly the size of the object and the distance. If you decrease the physical size of an object then obviously it will appear smaller so its angular size will decrease. But if you move the object further away then its angular size will also decrease. These are small but the ones out there are far away. Now any viewing device be it a camera or even your eye has a limit as to how small an angular sized object it's able to distinguish. We can see an ant on our hand but we can't see one from 50 feet away because its angular size is just too small for our eyes to detect and this is where the Rayleigh criterion starts to come in. The light reflecting off an object is travelling out in all directions, like an expanding balloon. We're seeing one small channel of that light. So the light that's approaching our eyes isn't just a single stream of light going straight for the pupil, it's a wall of light that's coming at your face. The light that we're going to see is just the bit that can actually reach our retinas. But before that it has to pass through our pupils and when light squeezes through an opening it diffracts. The tighter the gap then the more it diffracts by. Cameras go through a similar experience with what they call the diffraction limited aperture. A camera lens has an aperture opening inside them and you'll often see that when you take a lens down to its smallest aperture the sharpness of the image can drop quite noticeably. This is diffraction in effect because the light is being squeezed through a very narrow opening and causing it to spread out more so it's casting over multiple pixels and causing those clear defined edges between different colours to start to blend together. And the higher the density of pixels on the sensor then the sooner the diffraction starts to become apparent. So the camera's diffraction limited aperture rating changes depending on how many pixels it has per unit area. If you have two small angular sizes then as the angular gap between them decreases the light from them will start to overlap and they will appear to begin to merge. And the Rayleigh criterion finds out where the limit is before two objects become unresolvable from each other. So flat earthers are trying to claim that this is why objects disappear over the horizon because they're just becoming unresolvable to our eyes. Now you're seeing the effects of all of this happening right now. The screen that you are watching this video on has millions of tiny red, green and blue pixels that are making up this image. But the angular size of those pixels is too small for us to see. So when I put some purple on the screen for example, what you are seeing is the red and blue pixels light up and the green ones stay off, but because you can't resolve the individual red and blue pixels, the light from them is just merging together and so to our eyes, the light just appears purple. However, an optic that can magnify will increase the angular resolution of objects and eventually with enough magnification the angular resolution of those pixels becomes large enough that we can resolve them individually. 
The problem with all of this is that objects disappearing due to being unresolvable don't disappear from the bottom up like flat earthers claim. For example, I had Brian's logic arguing with me a while ago saying that we can't see a six foot object three miles away, so therefore we can't see the bottom six foot of any object three miles away. But his reason for that was that it had to be either due to perspective or due to the globe horizon, that it can't be both. That objects can't appear to both get smaller and smaller as they get further away, but then also be blocked by the physical curvature of Earth. Except you only have to stand next to an inclined road to know that that's not the case. You can see cars driving up a hill, and they will appear to get smaller and smaller as they get further from you. Once they crest the hill, they begin to disappear bottom up. And that's because the Earth is blocking our line of sight to them. And it can't be that we can't resolve the bottom six foot of objects three miles away because of limits to our vision, because that would then mean that we couldn't resolve the bottom six foot of any object that's three miles away. And yet we can resolve the bottom six foot of a plane when it's three miles away, no problem. I mean, I actually think Brian's logic has managed to debunk himself with all of this anyway, because six months ago, uh, fellow Globa channel Wes Wally put a video out showing the USS F-67 Falcon Heavy launch, and the video was from multiple different locations around the area, showing how the rocket didn't become visible in the locations further away until it had got much higher in altitude and much longer after launch because it had to get over the curve of Earth. One of the locations was Myrtle Beach, 360 miles away from the launch site, and Brian's attempt to debunk it was to show one frame of video as the rocket comes into view and try claiming that the rocket is in front of the horizon. The horizon is behind whatever is going on here. The horizon is behind it. So no matter what they have to say, this is a black swan. They just, that's just Wally's black swan. However, like this sunshine around the jet, you can see that it's clearly not going to happen like that. So apparently we can't see the bottom six foot of any object from three miles away because of a limit to our vision, but he thinks we can see a rocket in front of a horizon 120 times further. When it comes to the resolving power of the human eye, it seems flat earthers confuse angular size of objects with the angular sizes of parts of an object. For example, if you stand next to a tree, you can clearly see the individual leaves on that tree. As you move further and further away, perspective will cause the angular sizes to reduce. But it's reducing the angular sizes of every part of the tree. The angular size of each individual leaf will be reducing, as well as the angular size of the tree as a whole. Once you get to a far enough distance, the angular size of the individual leaves will become too small for us to make out. But the tree as a whole is still visible. It just won't appear to have the same amount of clarity as it did up close because you can't make out the leaves. If we take an optic and we zoom in on the tree, we can once again begin to resolve the individual leaves because their angular size has increased to a sufficient amount. Now, I've seen numerous flat earthers try and claim that if you zoom a lens into an object that's supposedly gone over the horizon, it will come back into view. The sailboat sails away and you can't see it anymore. It's shrunk from the bottom up. You can zoom in and bring it right back again. That's because the water's flat. Again, seeming to be confused between resolvable angular size versus physical obstruction. When we see videos of ships going out to sea, it, there's a clear cutoff from the bottom up, and it's very abrupt. It, it doesn't fit with what we should see with angular resolution limits. For starters, when something disappears because of angular resolution limits, the whole thing disappears uniformly, not from the bottom up. If any part of it is going to disappear first, it will be the smallest parts because those bits will reach our resolution limit first. Yet here we can see we've already lost sight of most of a hull which is 666 feet long. And yet, we can still make out the small antennas of a ship that is even further away. Even worse are the photos of cities across lakes like Chicago, 50 miles across Lake Michigan. Entire buildings are apparently out of sight due to perspective, and yet we can see the tiny masts on the top of the buildings. We can view a plane flying overhead at 35,000 feet, which is 
10 kilometers or 6.6 .6 miles, and by eye, you can just make out the shape of the wings and the fuselage, but you won't see any of the small details. And yet, with a lens, we can zoom in and we can start to make out the writing on the underside if it has some. So we couldn't resolve individual letters because of the angular size being too small, but the angular size of the entire plane is still large enough for us to render. We don't just see half a plane suddenly cut off. Or as I highlighted earlier, you can't resolve the individual pixels of your screen right now, but the bottom of your screen doesn't suddenly vanish. If it were because of angular size limitations, then it would only happen when the angular size is small. And yet, zooming in with a camera increases the angular size. This ship is taking up a quarter of the width of the sensor, so the angular size for the bottom of it should be more than enough for us to be able to see, but we can't. Now the funny thing is, the angular resolution limit of the human eye is one arc minute, or around 0.02 degrees. The peak of Mount Everest is 8,849 meters high, and is 7,500 kilometers away from the UK. That means, at that distance, the angular size of Mount Everest from the UK would be 0.06 degrees. So within the resolution limit of our eyes, and that's just the naked eye. Armed with a Nikon P1000, we should be able to see that thing clear as day. Now, I'm sure Flat Earthers will point out that we wouldn't be able to see that far because it wouldn't be clear as day. There would be clouds and bad weather between us and Everest. But the summit of Mount Everest is often above the clouds, and so are commercial aircraft at cruising altitude. And yet, I am still waiting to see a Flat Earther with a Nikon P1000 be able to show us Mount Everest from a plane over the UK. Or, from a plane above the UK, it's about 3,500 miles across the Atlantic to reach New York, and a further 2,000 miles or so to reach San Francisco. That means from a plane above the UK at 35,000 feet, there is enough vertical angular resolution for the whole of America to be visible to the naked eye. Again, even clearer with a Nikon P1000. And yet anyone flying across the Atlantic won't actually see America until only a few hundred miles away. The other telltale sign that this isn't due to diffraction is the clearly defined cutoff we see along the horizon. As we covered earlier, diffraction, as we see with the Rayleigh criterion, is from the edges of incoming light blurring and blending together, such as the pixels on the screen. We can see even with the diffraction effects on camera lenses. On sharpness charts, sharpness charts go from clearly defined black and white edges into the black and white blurring together and creating a softness. If objects going over the horizon were disappearing because of refraction, then we would see that same blurring of ships in the ocean coming together, which we don't see. I have actually got a little demonstration in mind for filming objects disappearing over the horizon to show it's not due to angular size limits, but all that's for another video. That's going to be it for now. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.